Now, let me see. The basic Mars package will run you 899 credits. Now, that's for two full weeks of memories, complete in every detail. Hey, but how real does it seem? As real as any memory in your head. Come on, don't bullshit me. No, I'm telling you, Doug, your brain will not know the difference. And that's guaranteed, or your money back. Let me suggest that you take a vacation from yourself. You're gonna love this, Doug. We offer you a choice of alternate identities during your trip. I'm mean, face it, why go to Mars as a tourist when you can go as a playboy or a famous jock or... Secret agent. How much is that? Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and today we'll be taking a look at one of my favorite science fiction films of all time, Total Recall, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sharon Stone, and Michael Ironside, which is directed by Paul Verhoeven. Loosely based on the short story, we can remember it for you wholesale by Philip K. Dick, which was first published in the April 1996 issue of Fantasy and Science Fiction. The screenplay for Total Recall was penned by Ronald Suchet and Dan O'Bannon. Set in the near future, the film essentially follows a character named Douglas Quaid, who is both the protagonist and secondary antagonist of the film. Starting off as what appeared to be a construction worker, it's revealed that he'd been having recurring dreams about going to Mars and meeting a mysterious woman, a source of controversy and humour for his wife Lori, who jokingly teased him about it. On his way to work, Quaid sees an advertisement for Recall Incorporated, a facility which offered implanted memories of ideal vacations that were indistinguishable from reality. Against the advice of his co-worker, Quaid requests a memory of an adventure trip to Mars as a secret agent, and even customizes the woman he will meet on the adventure to match the one he had seen in his dream. But before the memory implantation could begin, Douglas erupted in a violent rage, ranting about his cover being blown and claiming that men were coming to kill him, forcing the technicians to tranquilize him. After he subdued, the technicians realized that although they had not implanted him with a new memory, Doug's memory had previously been erased and his recent episode was the result of a suppressed memory of a man named Hauser resurfacing. With a major crisis on their hands, the director of Recall orders his team to erase Quaid's memories of Recall, refund his credits and send him home. Waking up in a Johnny cab with no recollection of how he got there, the poor guy is soon attacked by his workmate and a bunch of thugs, who claimed he had blabbed about Mars to the people at Recall. And though they outnumbered him, Doug was able to efficiently deal with them, utilizing his repressed skills as a secret agent named Hauser. Coming home to his wife Lori, he tells her what he had just done, only to have her attack him. Quaid is eventually able to overpower Lori, forcing her to explain that his original identity had been erased and replaced by a new one which included Lori as his wife, sending the confused Douglas Quaid on a rampage throughout the city in search of his identity. While Quaid is trying to piece everything together, he's pursued by the menacing Richter, played by the outstanding Michael Ironside, who was an agent working for Vilos Kohagen, the corporate dictator that was in charge of running Mars operations. Receiving cryptic clues and messages along the way, Quaid stumbles upon a package containing equipment, money, ID, and a video recording of himself, which explained that he was originally a man named Hauser, who had been a high-ranking member of Kohagen's entourage. Originally sent to infiltrate the Martian resistance, Hauser claimed to have met a woman named Milena, an agent working with the enemy that convinced him to switch sides. The recording then went on to say that Hauser was unfortunately captured by Kohagen and had his identity wiped and replaced by Doug's for his insubordination. Although this seemed convincing, and Hauser did offer him some valuable information about getting rid of his tracking device, we'll soon come to find that this is only partially true, and that Hauser was severely misleading him. With the menacious Richter close on his heels, Quaid follows Hauser's instructions and makes his way to Mars in order to reconnect with the rebels and help destroy Kohagen's empire. After meeting with Richter, Kohagen berates him for trying to kill Quaid and tells him to simply follow his orders and retrieve him as he didn't have all the information, revealing that Doug was of much importance to Kohagen. Now, the Martian infrastructure and colony had been developed by its self-appointed governor and billionaire entrepreneur, Vilos Kohagen, who forced the colonists to work in horrific conditions whilst also holding monopoly on air distribution for the colony. With the monopolistic power he held on Mars, and with no apparent government regulation, he was able to get away with forcing the population to pay to breathe the air he was making, which meant that the poorest inhabitants received a minimal supply of oxygen. The first generation of miners and workers received such minimal protection from solar radiation and lived in such awful conditions on Mars, that some of them began experiencing genetic mutations, which were also passed down through generations, ranging from physical changes to supernatural mutations. After arriving on Mars, Quaid finds a note located in the safe of his hotel room, which had been left there by Hauser, instructing him to contact Milena at the last resort. 
Although he's able to locate the woman from his dreams, she forces him to leave after he admitted that he didn't actually remember who she was. Returning to his hotel, Doug is then surprised by a visit from Dr. Edgemar, the founder of Recall, whom he had seen in the original advertisement that led him into the Recall facility. Edgemar tells him that everything that had happened since his trip to Recall was all in his mind, and insists that everything Quaid had experienced since falling unconscious at Recall was a dream caused by a schizoid embolism. Laurie then enters the room and reinforces the notion that Doug has been living in a fantasy, before the doctor offers him a pill which represented a symbol of his desire to return to reality, and warns Quaid that failure to take the pill would result in lobotomization, leading to his mind being trapped in an alternate reality forever. Spotting a bead of sweat on the doctor's face, which Quaid interprets as a sign that this was real and not a dream, Doug took Dr. Edgemar out before being saved by Milena. Aided by the rebels who give Milena and Quaid safe passage behind the last resort, the two make their way to meet Quato, the mysterious leader of the rebels who is believed to have incredible psychic abilities. Frustrated with the increasing conflict between his security forces and the rebels, Kohagen ordered his men to pull back prior to shutting down the air supply to the neighborhood, which began suffocating the inhabitants. Doug, Milena, and their cab driver Benny eventually meet a man named George, who unbuttoned his shirt to reveal that Quato was his conjoined twin. Quato then read Quaid's mind and saw a vision of alien ruins that had been rumored to lie underneath Mars. This of course was not Quaid's memory, but one that was extracted from the repressed memories of Hauser, who had been working with Kohagen to keep its existence secret. Unfortunately for the rebels, Quato was then shot by Benny, who revealed that he had been an agent working for Kohagen all along. And in his last few breaths, Quato tells Quaid to start the reactor that had been built by the ancient civilization. Seized by Reichter and his men, and brought in to meet Kohagen, it's explained to Quaid that the entire operation was a trap conceived by both Hauser and Kohagen to trick the rebels into trusting Quaid, in order to find the elusive and problematic Quato. And now that their plan had been completed, Hauser was going to be re-implanted back into his body, meaning that Quaid was about to be erased. You see, it's my body I've got there, and I want it back. Sorry to be an Indian giver, but I was here first. So, adios, amigo. Managing to escape from his chair with the aid of his ridiculous size and strength, Quaid is able to free Milena and make his way to the ruins, explaining to her that Quato helped him recover House's memory, which revealed that the ruins were actually reactors that could create enough air for the entire planet. This revelation would not only subsequently destroy Kohagen's empire, but it would also liberate the suffocating Martians of his tyranny. After turning on the reactor and defeating Kohagen, both Milena and Doug are sucked out onto the Martian surface, and we see them suffocating just as they had done in Doug's dream earlier in the film. The reactor rods which had been activated then initiate the rapid release of air into the atmosphere, saving our heroes and the entire population of Mars. As Quaid and Milena looked on at the blue sky in astonishment, Quaid began to wonder whether he was in a dream or reality. Hearing this, Milena invited him to kiss her before he woke up, as the screen faded to white. Now, was Quaid dreaming, or was it all real? What's most incredible about this film is that either interpretation of the ending is equally plausible, allowing the audience to make up their own mind about what they believed had happened, which was often influenced by what they desired to have seen happened. We all know that the world is an objective reality, and exists independently of us. However, our experience of the world is our own, and our perception of it is subjective. I mean, if our reality is what we experience with our five senses, it must be subjective. And if virtual reality is indistinguishable from reality, who are we to say which one is more real? If we believe the events depicted in the film as things that had actually happened to Quaid, then we're accepting a few bizarre things, including the fact that the protagonist, Douglas Quaid, was either an integrated personality created by Recall to serve the purposes of Hauser and Kohagen, or he was the mind of the infamous person that was supposedly lobotomized in Recall's earlier commercial stages. What about the guy you lobotomized? Did he get a refund? What that essentially means is that our hero was either not a person, but in essence a program that had been implanted into the body of Hauser, or he was the mind of a person that we would never physically meet. On the other hand, we could just as equally accept that the events of the entire film were a dream occurring at recall, as requested by Douglas Quaid. I mean, he did literally choose to become a secret agent that went on a Martian adventure, which was a package offered by recall. However, if we accept this as his reality, then we must also come to grips with the fact that by making the decision to kill the protection of Dr. Edgemar and refuse his reality pill, Quaid had permanently trapped his mind in a false alternate reality, while his body was lobotomized in the real world. Either way, your mind should be more than sufficiently blown. 
It's this and so much more that made Total Recall way ahead of its time, serving as inspiration for the next wave of groundbreaking, reality-questioning sci-fi films that borrowed some of the themes explored in Total Recall, like The Matrix and Inception. The film itself is an absolute masterpiece, combining ultraviolence with thought-provoking science fiction, supported by a mesmerizing soundtrack composed by the legendary Jerry Goldsmith. The special and visual effects supervised by Rob Botton, who began his career on The Thing, also really shine in this picture, as it was one of the last few sci-fi epics to avoid the use of computer-generated images, mainly due to the limited computing power of the late 80s. The prosthetics the actors wore, all the way down to the puppets like Quato, which required 15 people to operate, were all lifelike, often confusing those on set into believing that they were real. The film even went on to win an Academy Special Achievement Award at the 63rd Academy Awards. It's because of this that I truly believe Total Recall will go on to be one of the most influential films of all time. The first thing I did was I called Paul Verhoeven and I said, remember when we met a few months ago after you came out with Robocop? And I said to you, he says, Paul, you and I, we have to work together. You're exactly my style of directing, my style of visual looks. It's a visual feast watching your movies. It's extraordinary. So, so he says, yeah, I remember that. And I said, well, I have the project for us now. If you haven't seen the film, I've left a link to where you can purchase it below. Well, that's all for today, folks. Thanks to all of you guys who requested an explanation of Total Recall. If there's any other stuff you'd like me to check out, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. What do you want, Mr. Quay? The same as you, to remember. But I... To be myself again. You are what you do. A man is defined by his action, not his memory. Open your mind.